Hello again from AM Builds. Here is the preview of my new bench. It's almost done apart from finishing the self-contained dust separator. It will be living here in my small workshop and is not meant to be a transportable solution. I thought long and hard about the design of the bench and just like many of you here viewed a good number of videos on YouTube for ideas. I started by making my personal wish list. Number one, it has to be movable but totally solid when woodworking. My shop is only three and a half meters wide and I lose a meter with 200 millimeter deep shelving behind the camera and 800 deep mitre station on this side. Predominantly movement I need is backwards to allow more comfortable working at the front or access to my rear garden and forwards when I need to be around the other side of the bench. I wanted a totally solid bench when working so locking casters were excluded and I didn't want any system involving grovelling about on the floor so I came up with an electrical system based upon linear actuators to lift the bench to be mobile and down to be solid for work. Number two, I wanted a full sheet MFT style top. I do a lot with sheets and have neither the desire nor the flexibility to break sheets down on the floor. I'll be making further bench top components onto which to mount a rail system to facilitate the initial full sheet breakdown. Number three, I use my bench as an outfeed for my table saw, a TKS80, and to that end I have made a custom cart so that the saw table is just above the 975mm height of this bench. That is featured in my review of the TKS80 and the construction of the cart in a second video, and although specific to the face tool, the principles are applicable to any contractor saw used in a shop. Number four, I wanted my core power tools to be immediately available. Number five, I wanted my clamp selection to be within easy reach. Number six, I wanted within bench dust extraction with points where I would be working. Number seven, I wanted a vertical clamping facility on this edge, so if I needed to work on a door or something similar. And finally, number eight, I prefer a protruding edge for clamping rather than a box section. Now I had my wish list, it was time to formulate a design and let me show you what I came up with. Thinking back to playing Monopoly as a child, I thought of my bench as having a range of real estate value and here is my Monopoly method for workbench design. I reckon the dark blue Premier real estate is the top half of the front of the bench and so I didn't want to lose that to a tall torsion box where debris would cascade onto my stored tools and I certainly wasn't going to waste it with boxes of screws and bits and pieces. I wanted my core power tools to be literally to hand, ready to use and not in boxes and so, left to right, I have my OF1400 router, my FS55 track saw, my DF500 small domino and below that my DF700 large domino, and on the right my PS420 Carvex jigsaw. Also in the dark blue zone is the mains power, vacuum switched power and a suction point, so that a vacuum switching powered hose is there for each of the tools using the plug it power lead system. The next best space, or the green group for me, is the lower half of the front of the bench. I wanted to use that for the accessories for my tools so that I could set up and use a tool without moving more than a single step. I have my router accessories, room for expansion, saw accessories including items for the table saw, domino tool accessories like the FC Tools DCS plate and other of our videos, dominoes for the little domino, bench dogs and rail system parts, Jigsaw accessories, large domino connection system. Each drawer is a little larger than a sustainer and so where desirable the entire sustainer contents and plastic tray can be inserted as is. I wanted my bench ends to be easily accessible for clamps and my left hand end is more easily accessed due to the proximity of the saw on the right. For me the upper half of this space is the yellow and the lower half the red. Thus my most frequently used clamps are here in order 
with the rail clamps in the middle and two styles of F clamps flanking them. Lower down I have my market stall clamps which I only use from time to time. On the right hand end of the bench I have my orange group which includes the craft paper roll for painting, glue ups and working on dirty items and below that switched and constant power and a vacuum port for the saw. Below that are my large and small G clamps and below that my purple group of three-way clamps only used when I'm doing four edges and other less commonly used clamps such as strap clamps for frames. Round the back is mainly the service side with the sawdust drawers and the vacuum unit but I do have here my light blue expansion drawer. My current thoughts are to build a scissor lift on it and to use that to lift a planar thickness at a bench height. The drawer locks in both the closed position and the open position for safe lifting. Here is the bench with the sides fitted for vertical clamping. Awaiting some connection dogs, the sides sit in a groove low down on the bench and will be located via the edge row of holes on the bench top anywhere along the long side. And finally, the key feature for me, the lift and shift function, allowing me to lift and drop the bench with a finger switch. Utilising a 20 amp hour 12 volt sealed lead acid battery, constantly maintained by a small battery conditioner, the four 600 kilo rated linear actuators in the legs are simultaneously energised and lift and fall in reasonable synchronicity. The actuators stop drawing current at the end of their movement, meaning just flicking the switch is all that is needed to set the bench rising and falling. The bench height can be held anywhere on the travel by the actuators being switched off, but sitting on casters, the bench is pretty unsteady for working on. I hope you found my new bench an interesting project, and please help give my channel a boost by liking the video. A workbench is such a personal thing, with many factors feeding into the wish list and design, and mine is just one way of setting out a workbench. It's not better than others, it's just mine. I've collected along the way construction photos and clips to enable us to make a series of videos for the bench modules. I have the full-size MFT top, made from a standard MFT as a template, in production, and would welcome suggestions as to which aspects you would like to see after that. Again, please help my channel by commenting below. I've also added a PayPal Me link to this video in the hope of giving something to my son Malcolm for producing it. If you benefit from viewing the video, I hope you might consider making a modest donation for him. Please have a look at our other videos on the channel and please subscribe and click the notification bell to see our next effort. Goodbye.